Okay. Like chapters left. Unless I made final into a real chapter, final takes one turn in vanilla. I presumably harder in this. Here's your hack five minutes ago. Okay. Well, it's my turn. So, quick note about today. It shouldn't take too long to finish the game unless there's unexpected really hard stuff at the end of the game. Maybe there is, maybe there's not. Uh, Lorem's dead. We left her in longbow range accidentally. Uh, ostensibly that was my fault, but I do want to wish a thousand poxes upon the hack creator for giving uh, generics proc skills, because Lorem died to an adept proc. She would have survived a single hit. Uh, so... It is what it is. The guy was off screen. I could have scrolled over and remembered he was along, but a lot of stuff I could have done. Um, that I did not do. That's fine. We'll beat the game without Lara. Another thing of note for today is that there, in, in the US, there is a to uh, solar eclipse. Where I live, this is a partial eclipse. I do have some eclipse glasses. I think I'll. So around. Um, 319 EST is when it starts, and I'll want to go outside for a few minutes with my eclipse glasses and look at the partial eclipse. It'll basically be like, the sun will be kind of in a crescent moon shape because the moon will be obscuring a majority of it. And all the shadows on the ground will look like crescent moon shape as well because of the way the sun is blocked. I'm not in the path of totality, so it's not going to get like dark outside. But it's 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 like, you know... It's worth taking a couple minutes to just go outside, put on the funny little eclipse glasses, and uh, look at the sun being in a cool shape. Now we need to go beat up Bronya, and we need to go... Let's check out... Uh, 18 people, we're not... Oh, we still have to bring Guinevere to all the ending chapters. We're not going to bring, like, a lot of people. Um, I mean, we can bring just like bodies for kicks, but what I'm actually going to probably do, uh, despite the enormous deploy, is to use bolting to take out the ballistas. And we're going to probably warp Fey deep into the map to go fight druids and manikeets and wyverns all in one. Oh, stealable red gem at the end of the game! Oh man, I needed this. Pocket money. Oh, good thing there's a red gem you can steal. That is, of course, a joke. Just checking, um, what kind of weapons do these guys have? Because while there are Axe Reavers, Axe Reavers do not break, a uh, Lance Breaker, so it's still effective to use Geese. Armad's Geese does really well into Wyverns, uh, because it gives them extra- he has- if they even land a hit, he has extra defense, but they probably won't land a hit, he one-shots them. So I think that- lots of melee weapons on this side. How about we have Geese deal with the left group of Wyverns? while we have Fey move forward aggressively in the map. That sounds great. Let's have Geese be on the left. And we'll have Fey be on the top, and we'll warp her immediately to go start fighting stuff. Um, maybe not turn one, because turn one I kind of want to have uh, kill this with bolting. This isn't even really in the way. Oh, that's not really an issue. I'll kill that turn two with bolting. Yeah, these are barely even issues. Well, we'll do it turn two then. I'm not concerned. Let's get good units like Sophia up front as well. Uh, Wendy is a good unit. Let's deploy Bartray so we can uh, pick up Carol for kicks and see if Carol's any good. That's why we've been having Bartray sitting around with all these random PRFs as a joke for a long time. Otherwise, the rest of these units, I don't know, just random filler. I'm not really too concerned about it. Although some of the filler, like Lin, use Mulligir and uh, Durandal is actually pretty good. It's like how there's like a master seal on like the final chapter of Sacred Stones. Like just make it let's make a post-game shop that like sells them or something. Oh yeah, I forgot there's like shops here. In case you're like out of weapons, you can just buy shit. But there's a world map shops in this, so uh these are really unnecessary. Wait, the light brand only costs 2k? Hey, wait, this is fucked. Because the wind sword costs 8k and has identical stats. They're not identical weapons because of the wind swords an air caliber style weapon that's effective against uh, you know, flying, which is substantially good with all the wyverns in this game. But that price disparity 
uh, is pretty substantial, isn't it? Yeah, it's a big difference in price. Okay, Faye, go hold down the map. We Now, I wanted to bring this druid towards her, so I want to move her out of druid range. How much does she take from... nothing from mana keeps, really. How much from a druid? Not much. It's not Fenrir. She gets ch chipped pretty hard by Fenrir's, um, if she doesn't use her Divine Stone, but there's no Fenrir, so... I'm gonna move her basically as far as forward as I can get away with while still triggering that druid to chase her and die. And then um, we'll leave geese left side to handle these wyverns. They won't get no, uh, near him immediately, but we do have our mad geese. Uh, everyone else can... Archer can go grab Carol. I don't know why I deployed 7 million units, I just have to move them out of the way. We'll probably leave most of them at spawn. But we do have at least, at a minimum, the ability to not worry about any reinforcements or anything in this chapter. We can afford to leave most people uh, at spawn while Faye runs ahead and uh, does the map for us. Okay, let's enter turn. And here's Carol. I wonder if they buffed him. Because um, as Rave Sword, users have a strong endgame niche in this game because it's not just the Durandal. You also get the um, XX. Uh, Yoder has a random support with someone. I think that's what the, um, what the random talk was. But yeah, uh, right now I think Roy is holding the XX, because, um, not many S-rank sword users in my army. I guess I have, like, Lin and Roy. So if Carol has, like, maxed out stats, then maybe we could just give him a Zephyl sword and call it... I forgot there were wyverns on the left. They were scrolled off my camera. I was just looking up and down. Uh, yeah, I'll pay more attention to the player phase track and give you an opinion on it. Okay, so we don't one-round those mana keeps normally, but we got Dragon Fang procs, a pair of them. Yeah, Faye, Faye truly is the GOAT. Faye is easily the best character in this game. I mean, no one else comes close. She's ridiculous. She's truly the best. Who's my funniest unit? Uh, well, Faye is like the strongest by an overwhelming margin. She regenerates if she even takes damage, she uh, cures her own status. Miracle lets her impossible with to die of Miracle and Fortune. Her stats look like this. We didn't even have to give her many stat boosters to do this. We gave her two Speed Wings, a Draco Shield, and a Goddess Icon, I think. And oh yeah, five pairs of boots. I forgot about the five pairs of boots. Yeah, no, she can like walk like this far. Probably didn't even need to use the warp. So, these are all Lance units. Even with the Axe Reavers, uh, Geese just kind of cleans with the Armads. Is, can I reach? Okay, I'll fight one of his spear, so he doesn't throw the spear at me. Um, her animations were on, because Faye doesn't have Firestone animations, so they're not supposed to have a Firestone. But yeah, um, we'll, we'll let Geese fight a bunch of guys. Or Squinvere deploy is kind of silly. Never used her. Local chicken too happy to die. She just saw a butterfly. True. Okay, so random little tidbit. Can I actually bolting the ballistas without getting to? Okay. We'll we'll wait a little bit. When we're ready to move forward, we'll, uh, bolting out the ballista just so we don't forget he's there. Anyway, I'm gonna rally movement on Bartray so we can recruit Carol this turn. We gotta remove on Elfin, that's funny. Animations on for Carol animations? Yeah. Okay, we got EXP for visiting the village. The Nameless Blade. They weren't joking about high critical rate. Yeah, that, that, is, that sure is a high crit rate. Um, he has a wind sword, good against the wyverns. His crit rate appears to be an 89. He's a true blade. He has S-rank sword. This appears to be like a the Swordsmaster uh, class in 
uh, skills because crit boost, vantage, life and death, this is stuff we expected. Astra and Swordfare is certainly a combination. Um, the downside of Astra using up your durability doesn't matter if you give him the XX because he has infinite durability. So you could do like one the free range Carol. He has high con. He would only lose six points of speed from the XX. Losing six points of speed leaves him at 28 speed, which is pretty good. He has 27 strength. That's pretty high. He even has yeah, he just kind of has everything. The best. This is a, honestly like vanilla vanilla Carol. This is not even unusual. He just does this in vanilla. This is a buffed version of it, but. Carol legitimately has like 100% gross in vanilla because he only has one or two levels to gain. I think he might be level 19 or 18, I don't remember. Who has the XX? Okay, um... You can have it. Here. There's a 1 to, one to free range sword, because you have uh, high stats. Let's talk to you. Okay, well, uh... <laughs> sure. That conversation was kind of short, wasn't it? Who are you? I am Carol. Oh, okay. <laughs> me, me when I'm Carol. Alright, well, let's uh, keep moving, Faye. I want to be in range of enemies, but I can kind of run past them and let them come to me. I don't care if I get hit by things like sleep, because I have Boon to automatically cure my status conditions at the start of the turn. So let's um, run like here. That's a range of the lower right Wyvern and the Druid. And just kind of go sick of motive. What's happening? Why is it nighttime? Roy, you are nowhere near the front line. What's going on? I do like how there's a scene here for Guinevere to try and talk down Brenya. If Faye gets Berserk, she'll just cure it with Boon, so I'm not concerned about a Berserk Faye. And she only has 15 tiles of movement. As excessive as it sounds, I am outside of uh, the range of a Berserk Faye. You berserked the sniper of the killer bro next to Brunia and he killed her. That's hilarious! That's so funny. Okay. Um, I didn't mind that scene. The nighttime background was not fitting for the map's palette. I think that could have been really good if they decided to make this give this like a nighttime shade to the, the map. But that wasn't, like, a bad scene, I guess. I, I actually really do the idea, like, the idea of Guinevere kind of, like, showing up to try and, like, cause, like, a, a tangible difference. She's not just, like, you know, letting other people do stuff for her. She's, like, personally trying to talk down Brunya while also understanding her motivations and such. That seemed fine. You can go as far as left of the village and any further is Ballista Range, and I don't really know why I'm moving my units when... Faye is just going to kill everything, but I'm just kind of pretending to play. Oh yeah, the Canto Plus Lich is super annoying. Your run was basically Roy backstage for balls. How strong did your Roy get by the end? Faye Gaming? Yeah, Faye is just going to sweep this map. It's not even... Close. Although, I will say, I admire how much work Geese is putting in as an auxiliary unit here during like 21, 23, uh, just because of Lancebreaker and the Armads. Because we kind of relegate Geese to being a capture bot, um, he was ever like a primary combat carry. So it's kind of cute how at the very end he gets to kind of show up and uh, be special. The Axe Reaver guy had like a 40% chance to hit him, but that wouldn't have been a big deal. She doesn't even need a Dragon Fang proc, because she's doubling them back as a Kestrel Stance. Geese does not one-round the Wyvern Lords. Wow, they're bulky! If 
Gale is alive, he appears here for Delphi's shield. Yeah, Gale got himself killed on Roy. I think Geese has a nice smile. Get him, Faye. Man, there's a lot of Wyverns. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's speed this up slightly. Got a lot of them, aren't there? Wow, so that enemy, we needed that Dragon Fang to kill. We were only hitting 31s out of his 66 HP. Berserk missed, but we would have carried it with Boon regardless. Now, the sleep could actually be a problem if it went at the start of the enemy turn, because Boon happens at the start of our turn. So theoretically, we could have been slept and not been able to retaliate, but since they go last, it's like, not an issue. Technically, this Druid goes last. Okay, um, it's what, turn three? Yeah, it's turn three, and we have, um, removed most of the frets on the map at this point. So, that's that's happening. Hey, how strong is XX Carol? What, what's the animation look like? Do we have an animation for the ranged XX? Or does it just skip the animation? Astra. Okay, well, he's just doing an Astra. He's just flicking a light brand. Oh my god, he shot a rainbow beam at him. He just... Just held Zephyr's sword in the air aloft and said, Be gone! Gay blast! And uh, the Wyvern died with the rainbow. Maybe that's why Carol didn't marry. Maybe. Maybe he's a little gay. That's alright, Carol. We are very um, accepting of all uh, sexual orientations in this sword. Or in this army. Homophobic Wyverns confirmed. True! That's why they died. It didn't actually do any damage. The wyverns was homophobic. Bolting. Wow, uh, these snipers are strong. I can't bolting them and get guarantee a kill without additional support, and I might get hit by Adept Ballista and explode. So I've decided that I'm not even going to bother because Larum's dead and I can't um, uh, bolting twice. Can I actually double off the bolting? How fast are they? 17? How fast am I? I'm 20. Oh, the bolting's heavier in this game. I don't think the bolting is as heavy in FE6. This feels like a nerf. This definitely feels like a nerf. Roy needs to seize the gate. Roy has um, 15 tiles of movement. Uh, he'll probably just run straight past the ballista, and I'm not concerned about it. Hey, they're forming a wall. <laughs> Get out of the way. Alright, anything else going on? Uh, Geese is chilling. Bonk. Nice, he had two of you left. Good job, Geese. Yeah, I think the Glacies Bolting Sages are just a mess in this heck. I don't like them having proc skills on Bolting. We had Faye get hit by Glacies Bolting and take uh, big chips of damage multiple times during Chapter um, uh, 21. Oh no, I'm Berserked! What if I had Boon and it didn't matter? <laughs> this unit's broken! Alright, well, um, let's just go ahead and start beating them up. Do they have Fenrirs? They have Fluxes. They don't even have Fenrirs. Do I need to use the Eternal Breath, or can I just go into the Flamestone? Yeah, they don't even hurt me very much. I can straight up use the Flamestone. What about Brunya though? Does she hurt me? Does she have Glacies Bolting? Icy Fimbulvatar. Fimbulvatar's already icy. That's like the name of like... Some sort of like... Is not Fim Fimbulvatar like a reference to some sort of like uh, mythological like winter or something? Pretty sure it's already ice. Effective against Wyverns. Won the free range. Pretty strong. She has Bolting. Oh, good thing we can steal a Guiding Ray. <laughs> yeah, it's like hot fire. Kill Bronya Fetid Claw. Interesting. Oh, I like how her weapon ranks are ass. She's, she's ass. Uh, she has... Yeah, so a Glacius proc is gonna add like 27 damage onto her Bolting. But she also has Opportunist and Tome Fair. 
So how much damage does she threaten with bolting? She threatens a 42 with just her magic stat, and then Opportunist and Tone Fair means she threatens a 50, and then with Glacius, she threatens a 77. Um, which is pretty strong. That that does a lot. Uh, it looks like... She matches range with this mana key, but otherwise her goons don't move. She has seal res- no, she has seal magic, right? She has seal magic. So what we'll do is we'll just wait out the bolting. We can survive a Glacier's bolting, and our luck is too high to be crit, we also have fortune. And we also have Miracle, so it's like impossible to get one shot if we have HP. We'll equip the Eternal Breath and we're just getting out boltings. One by one. Uh, because Bronya threatens way too much burst damage uh, to do anything else. Kind of shitty boss design to just give like the strongest bolting of all time. I'm not sure how you deal with her reliably. Uh, maybe you warp skip into her. But Icy from Volvatar is her default weapon, and you could still get hit by Glacius by that thing. Does he, Did I just eat 10 damage without a Glacius proc? Yeah, I did. That's fucked up. That's so strong. Just checking this Ballista. Yeah, let's um, we can move forward. Like here? More outside Ballista range. Okay, let's exhaust this Bolting. We gotta miss. Oh, they're using status tabs. So that's actually a problem. Which one is the Berserk? Oh, Roy's out of range of the Berserk by one tile, so it's okay that he's asleep. Careful, Seal Res. She has Seal Magic. Not Seal Res, right? She still does uh, 10 damage on a hit. Do these guys have Seal Res? Oh, that's what I was being warned about. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah, the yeah, druids have seal res. I was under the impression that people were telling me that Bronya had seal res when she has seal magic. Okay, I was uh, misguided. Looks like she's just missing her boltings because Faye's stats are just kind of high. That might be the last bolting. She's down to the icy fimbulbiter. So let's uh, start taking out druids. Larum died to an adept longbow in chapter 22 in the Zephyr Castle. We There was a sniper that was kind of like off screen, off camera, that I didn't scroll left and see. And he had a longbow, and I forgot about both of those factors. Then uh, the guy walked up, hit at longbow range, and uh, got an adept proc and killed her. Are the status staves exhausted? Yeah, all these status staves are gone. You know, we did give Carol the X-Axe, but I might give it back to Roy. <clears throat> Just because Roy has 15 movement and Carol has 6. I'm just taking out um, Bronya's retinue because I have to deal with seal, uh, seal res and such. <laughs> Blue gem! Hi, Seraph! Okay, we are seal resed right now. How much damage do we take? It's effective against us. She also doubles. We do have Miracle. So if she doesn't double because we're using the Flamestone or we have Kestrel Stance, then we cannot die. She has 25 speed. So with Kestrel Stance on our turn, uh, does Boom work on Seal Res? I guess? We don't seem to be Seal res this is our normal res with the flamestone. Anyway, um, I just thought of something. I thought of a funnier way to kill Bronya. Hold on. Let's waste a warp for kicks. Because obviously we could fight her. Faye has Miracle and can't really die. 
But just to disrespect this game, I want to four range her. Yeah, Mike, Miracle make it really reliable. But I want to do something, I want to disrespect this game and show how broken it is. That's all. Mulligear is free range and Lin has bow range plus one. So when you combine those two factors, you can uh, cheese out free range bosses like that. Um, in my area, there is a there is a partial eclipse. I'm too far away to get into the path of totality easily. My brother drove ten hours to go see the eclipse today. So around one hour from now, I am going to walk outside my eclipse glasses and I'm going to look at the sun and see the cool crescent moon. But otherwise, um, that's all I'm going to do. It's going to take me like five minutes. It's not going to get dark here. There's not much to look at. It's just uh, the shadows on the ground are going to be like a cool crescent moon shape and uh, I can, you know, see the sun partially blocked. That's about it. Okay, so Elfin's warning me about the path of no return. Okay. I guess Ellie would uh, required deploy. Sure, why not? We'll give him the Durandal then, just so he has... If he's gonna be here, he can pull the Durandal, it's that simple. Um, Lynn has a couple uses left on Mulligear anyway. Not many. She's been using them up because of uh, Adept, or uh, Astra has been burning through them, like, really hard. Well, we can also bring Carol. We'll have, like, Roy Binding Blade, Carol XX, um, Ellie Wood Durandal. Uh, Lin, five uses left of Mulligear. Who else can use some legendary weapons? Geese with the Armads. Uh, there's one. Sophia Apocalypse, that's pretty good. We can have uh, four blaze, some boltings. Uh, how about Maltet on Wendy? There's another one. No one can use the Oriola, the Light Tome, but that's fine. Uh, who else do we want to bring to final? Is Carol's Blade also considered legendary? Doesn't Guinevere of S rank light? No, she is a. Uh, I think it's just a high crit sword on uh, Carol. I don't think it's anything uh, exceptional otherwise. Bring Yoder. I mean, he has the Staff of Saints. He doesn't have S rank. Uh... He can use all these staffs, I guess. Does he need to restore? Is it even possible to get hit by status conditions at this point? Is there anything else we could possibly bring? We can make Berserk a Maniki as like a joke. Oh, we bought his rescues and we never use them. Why is Ellie would require it? I don't know. Yeah, there's a bunch of crap we're never gonna use in here. Okay, I'm grabbing the Berserk as a joke. Sophia can reach free to Yeah, Sophia could like uh, hit pretty bulky Luna crits on any boss. Sophia might be our final boss killer if they have like weird skills. Ellie would can crash the game if he uses Durandal. With animation saw? Bring Unlock Staff. I don't know why you're telling me that, but it sounds funny enough. I mean, it's in Roy's Convoy either way, but I'm choosing to follow this instruction without even questioning it because it's funny. There you go. I'm bringing the Unlock Staff. Don't ask me for anything more. Uh, Clarine has Power Staff. Do I care? She could maybe carry someone. It's crazy that we entered a world where Clarine wasn't even an important unit anymore. She could, like, rescue someone around if we need to do that for some reason. I don't know. I'm just looking for characters I would actually care about bringing. Shauna was pretty strong in the game. It feels weird not, bring, not to bring Shauna when she's this strong. It's just that Melody uses the Maltet. I mean, not Melody, I mean, uh, Wendy. Wendelin uses the Maltet and not uh, Shauna. Despite Shauna having, like, kind of high stats. Shauna can use a Worm Slayer, right? Maybe she can do something against the uh, Manichaeans. Maybe she's not useless. Let's give her the Worm Slayer. That's a weapon. Here, Melody, put, put your Worm Slayer away. Uh, maybe we can give another Worm Slayer to someone. But we have S-Rank weapons to other characters, so... I mean, maybe if Lin uh, is worried about running for the Mulligear, we can uh, give her... Yeah, Shauna's been here the whole journey. She's been here from, like, Chapter 2 onwards. Besides Roy, Shauna is, like, the longest-running character. Larry's last skill is Staff Savant? That's funny. Yeah, we never got it. 
And kids get annihilated by magic like vanilla. Not as much because they have um, one to two range, so it's not like free. Give another weapon to Roy. Like what? Magic weapon? Sure. There's a magic weapon. He can. Oh, a rune sword. That might be a, like a Nosferatu. He has 25 magic. Okay, Roy has some weapons. We seem to have a Nosferatu on Fey. Did a druid drop it? Perhaps. Okay, I think we have a pretty... we have a setup. Let's go in. Legends and Lies. We're definitely not going to read uh, guy's dialogue again. Yeah, there's, there's some of the random uh, S-rank weapons from FE7 made their way into 21X's loot, but we didn't get all of the items. You still want to see a Fed and Claw kill. I... There's just no animations for it. It's not as funny to go for it as it otherwise could be. Who do I want in front? I mean, Faye and Roy can move 15 tiles, so they're probably going to end up, like, skipping ahead. And everyone else is going to be kind of secondary to that. Something, something. I think it's funny that John is, like, at the top of the temple. He's just shouting out Roy the entire time. They're just chatting the whole time. Anyway, I, I read this, and I, I don't really care about John's speech. This could be a face all yeah, it really could be. <sighs> Did they not update the chapter? Is it still just Manikeets? Like, who already were very strong? Level 8 Manikeets? Come on. Really? That's what we're doing? We're doing level 8 Manikeets? Can I try to suppose that Ellie would crash with the Durandal? Yeah, I can try that in a second. Um, he'll have to reach an enemy, which, uh... The, the issue of trying to crash the game if Ellie would is the implication that Elliewood can reach an enemy in order to fight it. But we live in Faye's world, so that's maybe not true. I guess save Binding Blade uses and stand back here, so they all go for Faye. Because this, this chapter is terrible in vanilla, it's just a really low quality chapter. I am very open about my disdain for it as a very repetitive, grindy chapter with a unexciting design. You can do one room, you can do the rest. All it really does is like, showcase your legendary weapons hitting for 60 damage and that's it. Oh yeah, Sophia has like a lot of boots too. I'm just, there's nothing here. It's, it's Faye, Faye is going to kill everything. She actually took damage. My question is, how did she actually take damage? Do they have Dragon Fang? No? I'm not even sure what damaged her. I was just skipping through it. I guess I hit for sixes. Anyway, um, let's have Sophia uh, finish off this enemy, and we'll just keep on rocking and rolling. Let's try and play this chapter quickly, because it's just, it's boring. Um, the Manikeets are all going to be the same. There's no enemy variety here, and all of the Manikeets get either destroyed by Fey, or if I bring another unit up, I can hit them for like 60 of a, a legendary weapon. Sophia's extremely good in this hack. Um, it's not just the fact that she has all-around stats, but Shaman is an excellent class for utility uh, and consistency purposes, because the combination of Hex and Anathema is minus 25 evasion and some uh, minus some crit dodge on nearby enemies. On the top, on addition to Nihil, uh, lets you get through a lot of the bullshit in this game. We one-rounded Zephiel despite him having Wary Fighter, because Nihil allowed us to double him. And we weren't worried about his uh, bullshit like Resolve Vengeance procs to deal 5 million damage because Nihil cancelled all of it. It's like hard to even use my other units because Faye exists. I can, like, use a rescue staff to, like, help bring other units closer. We ha we certainly have these rescue staffs to spare. It'll help me... Can you fly across the, the void with Shana? You cannot. I have a bunch of rescue staffs in convoy. Even if I didn't get as lucky with Faye, I would have just purchased her more speed wings. She got the 17 speed, uh, naturally. Um, 
but I would have just gotten her 20 speed no matter what. Also, her speed growth is pretty good. I think you got very, very unlucky with your Fae, because her base speed is like 8 or something in this, so she's actually projected to be around 17 to 18 speed. I think I was actually statistically average when it comes to Fae's speed. But yeah, I can just run in there and actually play. Like, do they... Okay, so Zephyr's XX makes this already easy chapter beyond trivial, because you, if your weapons are 1 to 3 range, then you you don't even get attacked back. I guess it was already easy because Manikeets only have 1 range in vanilla, but isn't this a little ridiculous? Get them with the, the sword. Astra. Rainbows. The homophobic uh, dragons have been slayed. Carol is the, uh, the pride demon. How about Apocalypse? I think, I think Apocalypse is overflowing the amount of damage it's supposed to be doing here. Cause I'm, I'm under the impression that it does more than one point of damage. I'm just speculating, but I think it does more than one point of damage. One on one. I meant that the the text is overflowing, uh, not that the value is going from positive to negative. I used the wrong word there. <laughs> That's the thing. It might be possible for Sophia to underflow her damage. Do you think if Sophia crits, she actually does damage? Can she hit three hundred? Like, do you think that it's like an 8-bit, like, unsigned integer for uh, damage values? What if Sophia can do negative 50 because she just tries to hit 300 and it goes past? Sophia can break 100 in vanilla. Um, I feel like she would cap out uh, just under vanilla because she would have, like, less than 30 magic and even with supports, I'm not sure she can do more. Uh, Kanas, I think, in FE7 can break over 120 damage of Fila's Might, so you can one-shot the Fire Dragon at the end of uh, FE7. Isn't Druid Female Cat 30 magic? Okay, but can you- in Vanilla, she's a Dark Affinity, right? I don't think she can add much damage for her supports. I'll rescue Elliewood, because apparently we want to see if Elliewood has a, a crash with the Durandal animation, so um, I'll bring him closer to the front. Uh, I have another use of rescue. And I can just bra uh, grab more rescue stabs out of convoy. Like, right now. This can be what Clarine does. She can use the rescue stuff. Hold on. I mean, we bought them. They were really cheap. They're so cheap. There's so many of them. They How do you make Effie en uh, Endgame good? FE7 Endgame is actually a, a, a good chapter. Unironically, I like that chapter. Does anyone, Do other people like that chapter too, or is it just me? Oh, there's like an enemy there. <laughs> I didn't notice. Does Yoder die? They're 40... Do they do flat HP damage? Like, no, they only get truce by defense. Either way, he doesn't have a weapon, so I'm gonna go ahead and, uh... Let's rescue him. Then we can uh, have someone take the guy, uh, take Yoda off of Ellie Wood, and we can see if Ellie Wood's animation crashes the game. Okay, so the animations are on. I'm gonna make a save state. Okay, I made a save state. And now I'm going to um, have someone grab Yoda. And we're going to use the Durandal, with animations on. We're going to see if anything breaks. Okay, so they kind of instantly turned into... Dragon. Well, that was kind of cool. That was sick, actually. I love how the Durandal is like this truly massive sword that's like... longer than he is tall. It's... Truly unbelievably large. It's like the Dragon Slayer from Berserk. 
That was- I like how we got to see the crit. I'm happy that we saw the critical animation there. Yeah, that looks fixed. Yeah, it's the Blazing Blade. Wee. So how, how hard does Eternal Breath hit for? 58. So it doesn't even one-shot. So if you need a Dragon Fane to kill anyway, you may as well use the Fire Stone. Charge Convoy, that sounds funny. How, how hard is the- how hard hitting is the Binding Blade? It's pretty strong. Just wanted to test. Oh hey, we have Gale Force on Roy now. Since Roy has all this movement, I should give him the X-Ax. Uh, like, Earl can use the X-Ax, but he's not really using it. Um, because he does not have 15 tiles of movement. So, one second. Carol, I need Amazon delivery. Oh, Roy gained Gale Force that level, and he's also able to use it the same level he got it, so we can actually seize this turn and take the X-Ax like this. That's cute. What makes FE7 endgame good? I like the strength and the pacing of the enemies. Um, the enemies are very strong, like, so it feels like all the units you've trained all game are paying off in, like, this brawl against, like, these really powerful mini-bosses. The mini-bosses also make for a fun gauntlet. And I also like how in FE7 Endgame, the enemies are very aggressive, so you're really fending them off as they, like, you know, they're coming at you, like, you know, like, this gauntlet of, like, power waves of enemies. And there are also, like, all the previous morphs that you fought earlier in the game, the, like, raised corpses and stuff of, like, previous bosses and, like, their ultimate form. So it's just kind of like a big culmination of what you've been doing the entire game against some very powerful enemies using some very powerful weapons because they use S-rank weapons and such. That's why they have to give you Athos because uh, they need to make sure you have a way to kill some of these enemies. Athos is like 30 Might Lunas, which is just better than 4 Blaze, by the way. <laughs> So I can kill off the XX and I can uh, Gale Force. Okay, yeah, so XX is better than the Binding Blade because it doesn't, um, break. Binding Blade, more like the Breaking Blade. Got him. Man, he's, he's cutting through him. Let's bring in some more help. Uh, Gale Force only gives you one uh, turn refresh per turn, so you can't Gale Force all the way. I don't even have damage on Clarine, that's funny. Uh, but I can always Power Staff Rescue more combatants in. How does the Nameless Blade do against these guys? Let's watch the melee critical animation. Or, uh, True Blade. He did not do a critical hit. Thank you, Carol. And everyone else is so far behind. The, the movement despair, like, look, look how far behind Wendy. Wendy's back here, and, and Roy's like... Oh my god. Have Wendy fight the reinforcements? I could have her kill some of them all for kicks. Like, one final hurrah, like, just for Wendy being strong. Okay, we, we need to seize. But then we can uh, rescue Roy to bring him forward. This is outside of Dragon Range, right? Yeah, that's one tile. Does movement have a cap in this game? 15. Otherwise, I would have given even more boots to Faye. I want to see the True Brain animation. 
we missed our opportunity, so I'm just going to keep bringing Carol closer to us. Gale Force does not proc on seas, no. Gale Force procs on kill. Oh! We are outpacing this map so hard that the reinforcements are spawning directly in front of us. That's how fast we're going. How, how strong is Maltat Windy? She takes a hit. But like, four blaze Lelina probably... Oh, holy crap. Four blaze Lelina does pretty well. I like how for all the pizzazz with like, the giant, like, blow on the screen. Maltet is basically just a really fancy javelin. You've always Gale Force specifically for this chapter. They give a lot of characters Gale Force. I feel like it's not even specifically for this chapter. I think they just gave it just to make Roy good. But yeah, XX Roy one shotting manikeys and Gale Forcing is pretty strong. Well, you can also do it with the Binding Blade. We just, uh, you know, use a lot with the Binding Blade. Yeah, that enemy's alive. Maybe we can look at Carol's. Um, is Yoder in danger because the reinforcements are spawning right in front of us? We can we can get the uh, four blaze. It is funny how we're going so fast, our bad guys are actually uh, threatened. But animations are on right now, so let's try and watch this critical animation a, a second time. Yeah, I'm always leaving his wife behind. Crit, crit. Okay. Yeah, that was pretty cool, I guess. I like how he bounced off the wall. The wall is not there, but he still bounced off it. That was a sick animation. I, I was a big fan of that. Otherwise... The True Blade just looks okay. It doesn't really have the vibes of Carol because it doesn't have like the long cloak-like Swordsmaster garb, but um, the crit was fine. The issue is that Roy has to kill and seize and now he can do both. True! Why <laughs> you can just walk up and be like, yeah, you're dead now. <laughs> so much damage. Let's let Celia go first because she can't walk as far. So she can go up and kill off Apocalypse. I'm just skipping through. A blank level up. I wonder why she got a blank. It's probably because of these stat caps. But, you know, XX Roy can just kind of get a kill and a and seize on the same turn, which is uh, really good. How far can I rescue from? Can't rescue Lynn from here. How about here? I can. Now Lynn can go. Oh, she's one tile away. She cannot uh, kill that guy for me. Sophia might have to take a hit. I can't let my pure Sophia take damage. She's too cute to die. She wouldn't have died, of course. Just rescue Lynn again. You're right! I, in fact, could have done that. Our staff is dumb. Our staff is exceedingly silly. Yeah, I don't, I don't even feel like you do more rescues. I'm just kind of messing around at this point. Nothing matters. We also have the same staff. I don't, are we even going to use that? This is a very silly chapter. It's still going, too. And that's fine, Nick. I actually don't think that... I think Power Staff is kind of cool because it can give like a, a dedicated utility unit more of a purpose to their existence because a, a unit like Natasha could be very easily replaced by a mage that promotes into staves. So giving her better action economy makes gives her like a much more of a niche as a utility unit. It's just that when you give a unit like these offensive stats and also like eight movement and also Power Staff and a horse and I don't know. It gets, it gets silly. She can recruit Joshua Power Staff. That's kind of cool. Yeah, you know what? I, I respect that decision. A lot of the time when I talk about broken skill, I think the skill can actually put to good use with good game design, but the implementation of the skill systems in this 
is too extreme, and they're too hot, they're too fast and loose with giving characters powerful skills, um, which causes the balance to suffer, because it creates a big disparity between good units and bad units, and a lot of units can be like really game warping, and other units are very bad. Some units' skills don't even work. Like Astolfo's skill doesn't do anything. Lot's skill also bug doesn't do anything. Where's Power Staff from, by the way? I don't recognize Power Staff from the uh, the actual game series. Does anyone know where Power Staff comes from? You have to defeat the final boss of the Binding Blade. Ideally, but like we might accidentally not do it because like Sophia might crit with Luna and kill her, like immediately. So maybe not? Question mark. It's a mystery. I'm gonna use the Worm Slayer for kicks. I have heard of Cerulean Coast, I have not played it. Once per turn, Goddess Dance balanced. I mean, that just sounds like FE4 Dancer. Right? Is that what, what you're talking about when you say Goddess Dance? 02 damage, but it's 102. The game just posted 99 because it doesn't know what a bigger number is. Hack an iron rune onto Edon so she doesn't get crit. Funny. It's the last chamber, John's chamber. Okay. He has the full on fire dragon sprite, which is a good change. It's like super boring in vanilla. How you come up on John and you fought nothing but manichaeus, and it's just like another guy in a hood, and it's like the least impressive thing of all time. He's just a slightly stronger manichaeus. This is more impressive because he has much higher stats and like a unique sprite. Does he have any bullshit skills? Fiery Blood, Dragon Fang, no, don't do proc skills, not on your bosses. He has Seal Attack, Seal Defense, Savage Blow, kind of boring on a unit like him. Grizzly Wound. Okay. Capture him? I, I could. New Firestone for Faye. You can get a new Firestone off of it, just anything though. Is his stone unique? Wait, it is unique. That's the Flame Tongue, not the Firestone. It doesn't have speed. It doesn't have. It's not like. better, actually. It's just different. It has Luna. If this is the FE7 Flame Tongue, it would have Luna. It has free range? I didn't notice. Where's Geese? I want to capture John. I am one tile away from being able to. I need a power staff to be able to uh, go. Rescue geese. Okay. And then we can do like power staff rescuing to transport geese a high number of tiles over the next couple of turns. Well, a lot of the reasons they changed the music is because FE6 and uh, 7 and 8 use like. I think 6 is a different GBA sound font compared to the other ones, so they had to change some of the music. Oh, there's another guy. Uh, what if there was not a guy? And there was less guys. Okay, there's less guys now. Yeah, the FE6 sound file is completely different. How much con does the boss have? 10. Our geese has 20, so I, I'm fairly confident that is uh, within capture range. Okay. Oh hey, I can move over here and uh, apocalypse this guy this turn. How oh, convenient. Don't worry, you have not missed it, Luna. And missing this chapter is not much. The highlight of this chapter is going to be we're going to try and capture John, because we're going to see if his flame tongue has Luna, like the uh, final boss of FE7. It also has free range. 
But let's um do some power staff rescuing to transport our goose. Oh, it's like we're migrating. You know how geese like they get into like formations, they fly in like those V-shaped formations and they go south for winter? Yeah, geese is returning to the uh the north now that it's spring. Uh to warmer climates. I think John is a warm climate, right? I think John qualifies as a warm climate with the flame tongue. We already had just the actual spellbook Luna on Sophia as well, but if we have another Luna that's going to be, um, comedy. It's going to be funny. We're going to steal John's tongue. Yeah, we're going to cut it out. We're going to remove his tongue. We're going to eat it. Do we have uh, more guys to kill? Oh man, this guy's coming for us. Oh, they're going to overrun Molina. Guys every turn. You're Luna, true. So we have three Lunas. We have one in chat, uh, one spell tome, and then maybe another one on John. I'm going to do Volney after. Um, with all respect, no. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> when I'm done with this game, I want to shut it off and not launch it again. I actually will launch it again for the purposes of making a video. I want to make a review for this hack because I think it's, um, I want to talk about all the things in the hack that are broken and don't function. When I say broken, I don't mean subjectively game design broken, I mean literally bugged and just does not function. There's so much of it still. Is there anyone hurt so we can use a... I can, I can use a rescue for power staff purposes because I can do this, I can take another turn, then I can move geese closer to John. Now let's be careful, John is free range, we also don't want to accidentally uh, kill John before geese gets there. There's a tower unchanged, it appears to be the vanilla tower of Volney, um, which means those monsters don't have the same stat inflation that all the playable classes got on the enemy side, so the enemies there are extremely weak. I think praiseworthy in this hack that wasn't stolen from other games. Some of the original scenes I actually really like the concepts of. A lot of them I don't like the execution, but um, I really like the idea of characters like Guinevere and Lelena having more of a story presence instead of everything just being Roy talking to Merlinus. I like the idea of that change. So there's there's something. I also like the idea of the um the guidance chapters being less warp skippable by having the uh, extra boss fights against the heroic spirits at the end. Um, I think that's actually kind of interesting. Yeah, we'll let um, Wendy have a, a grand battle against these. Uh, three might kill her if they all hit and she doesn't great shield. So we'll bait the furthest one to go towards the Lena because they have five tiles of movement and two tiles of range and the Lena can survive one hit. And then we'll take two with Wendy. Yeah, I don't mind the concept of uh, some of the FE7 units showing up. I do think the implementation of it's clunky, like Florina showing up in a chapter of 5 million nomads and stuff like that. Um, but like, Lin existing because of the orders in which the game was written, that's not that bad. Yeah, uh... Kinda get my ass kicked here. I guess I just have to um, survive the turn. That's all that needs to happen. In fact, what I can do is I can Worm Slayer and then I can use a heal from Yoder. Yeah, Florina is really. She's bloat in this game. She doesn't really have a, a presence. She doesn't really get to talk to Lin, like, a single time. She shows up and just kind of redoes an F a scene from FE7, and then she's just kind of there as, as filler. Yeah, I don't recall Florina having any dialogue with Lynn. I think they just both joined the same chapter, but then you just start talking about Diane and the Dan and the uh, Mulligir and uh, stuff, and like Roy. Like Florina and Lynn actually like chat. 
I don't even know if they have a talk conversation in uh, 18x, I don't recall there being one. Okay, how do we chip down John into capture range without killing him? We deal zero damage. We are not capturing John. Why do we deal zero points of damage? It's because he has 38 points of defense and he is not weak to the Armads. What about the Binding Blade? He is not weak to the Binding Blade. The XX. How about the Luna? How about the Luna, but we're standing closer? I should have gotten Sophia more supports. If we had Shauna here, we could rally... How much? We have 23 speed with this? If we rally, don't we get uh, to get to double the Luna? What's rally? This is looking a lot better. Okay, let's turn on the animations and go in. I don't even think this is necessarily a for forgot to program the Dragon Week. This might be intentional to make him stronger, but it still feels bad. Or range him? I'm not sure I deal damage with the Mola Gear. No crit. Zero. Carol is pretty strong. Can Carol do damage with the XX? He has 27 strength. And the XX gives plus free strength, 30. And then it has like 18 might, and then Carol can probably double. How about Carol? Let's try Carol. I don't have any rescues left. Can we get a rescue out of Convoy of Geese, and then another one with Lin, and do like this, like, okay, hold on, hold on. Geese, you can't damage the boss anyway, so I need you to find me a uh, rescue staff. We use them all. We use them all for, van for vanity. They're gone. Kill Sophia. I can use the Saint staff with uh, Yoder to do that. Because I need to heal these guys anyway. We can heal everyone from using the same stuff. Uh, Lena just got Gale Force. I have the Armads, but it's not doing any damage to the boss because it's not effective. So we're just going to take out some of these enemies, we're going to heal everyone with the same stuff, and then we're going to have Sophia take him out on enemy phase. But no, I don't have the Basilicos. I don't have it. I need to heal Shauna uh, before she attacks because she can't guarantee accuracy. But this room will be safe. Let's use the Saint Staff. Is Yoder supposed to have that much hair? Yeah, Sinola has the Manny Caddy, not the Soul Caddy. She lost the Soul Caddy somewhere. Slayer, get the kill. Thank you. They inverted his beard, true. Okay. Um, yeah, XX Carol could like do massive damage, but we just kinda wouldn't be able to do it until next turn anyway, but this is fine because we're gonna rely on Luna Sophia. So I'm very glad that we invested in this Luna Sophia thing. Yeah, even the Eternal Breath, which, uh, mind you, is effective against dragons, is uh, ineffective against dragons. We might also just kill if Faye gets a double crit, or like a crit with a dragon's fang. We got two dragon's fang and no crit.
Probably went for Faye instead of Sophia there. Kind of skipping all this so I can end the turn. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's play final. Uh, it's gonna be hard to kill her with the Binding Blade if the Binding Blade doesn't have effective damage. Because we're probably just gonna Luna Crit her. So maybe we, we won't get the good ending. Maybe we'll just get the okay ending where you kill Eden. Beyond the Darkness. Did they change this chapter? Because this is like the lamest final chapter in the series. Uh, this is the same square map. Come on, I feel like if you get him do an FE6 remake, you should completely rechange Final. You should just make a new map. Just something else besides the box. Efer Proc Roy, yeah, that has Luna. Efer Proc Roy could probably kill thing. Yeah, I'll look at Edon, don't worry. Even if she has wacky skills, we can just uh, fix it with Nihil. With uh, Sophia. Huh. Why is there a two-weapon Hector-looking guy in front of Eden? Wendy! Peace! Uh, Yoda from Star Wars. Best unit. Why? Why do I have to fight you? Why are you on Edun's side? You're a king? You're Hector of two swords? The Exus Slade? It's brave 1 to 3 range? He's got rightful king soul procs with resolve and a bunch of other crap? Okay. The Manicutes are pretty weak. Oh, Edun. I have no idea how much HP she has. Let's look at her skills. Rightful God. Well, is that just guaranteed Dragon Fang procs? I guess she always does Dragon Fang. She has 247 hit rate, which seems a little bit overtuned, but I guess you can't avoid this, so... The no damage shake of uh, this game seems unlikely. She has, um... Fierce Stance and Steady Stance. Well, Heart Mode looks like a problem. Um... On account of his, uh, Brave Weapon. Yeah. That's nasty. So maybe we can kill him with the Mulligear. We also have Bolting. We can see if we get an Astro with Mulligear. This would at least apply some chip that we can probably nuke him down, because we can do a lot of damage with another character. Like, because we can hit half his life. We just, you know, need to... He doesn't have Vantage or anything, right? Yeah, he just has Guaranteed Soul. We just need to avoid his soul. What's his last skill? It's Resolve. Yeah, it's Resolve. Let's do some chip at 4 range. Why are you fighting on our side? Never. Okay, this will break the Mullet Gear to do 30 points of chip. Maybe more if we crit. Astra crit? Yeah. So Astra did less damage than a single crit arrow would have done, and it broke, so we don't get another shot. Goodbye, Mullet Gear. Now a character like Lelina can kill. Sophia, as well, uh, can probably kill off Apocalypse. Yeah, we have options here. Um, I do need to, like, not have Lelina die if she's a game over death, but I can find a way to rescue her with another character. I would also like to thin out the Manikeets, uh, so we don't die to those. Um, XX Roy could kill a Manikeet. Um, Sophia could kill a Manikeet. But that's only two. We don't have a Dancer right now. Kind of burn for our rescue staff, too. Lelina has Gale Force. Roy is Gale Force. We can just chew up these Manikeets then, can't we? Let's uh, start killing them. I'm glad you enjoyed the VODs, Dustin. We're still on track for True Ending, as long as we can find a way to kill Edun with um, the Binding Blade, which, like, maybe, we might end up like killing her with a Luna crit. 
Anyway, let's use a Gale Force Lolina to kill Heartmut. Before I says gay rights, yeah. Alright, Heartmut dead. Goodbye! Don't know why you're on this map, but yeah. Mulder Gear is broken, yeah, Mulder Gear uh, shattered. Uh, that Astra broke it. But it was able to chip Heartmut, so that was a good use of our uh, resources. I have to say, Melina has been kind of clutch getting Gale Force at the very end. It's making um, this chapter more convenient. Eden doesn't move. Uh, if she moves, then someone dies. Is Heartmut on the fire map of Ember out now? She moves a little bit, which is news to me. Is she going to kill someone? Maybe she's going to kill someone. Interesting. I make it safe so you think I can get the true ending. Uh, I can make one, but I'm also not like ultra attached to it. So I don't want Lelina to explode and die, so I might have to... Ugh, she moves. It's pretty bad that she moves. I might sack Clarine by having Clarine power staff in there and stand in front of Eden to be like bait. Because she can power staff to get there. She can also rescue Sophia. That's so much more boring than uh, killing her for absolutely no gain. Yeah, she can just rescue Sophia. Ugh. Fine, I can do the, the sane play. Versus gay rights. Um, I can be normal about it. I guess. Do we just E for bolting? You can do that. E for bolting crit. That was just statistically unlikely. God, damn. I forgot you could E for your boltings. Yeah, Rightful Air made that E for more likely, but it was still only like, uh, with, 27, with 27 skill and Rightful Air, your chance to ether is like, uh, 23% based on how it rounds. Oh yeah, we still have Fey. We haven't even used Fey yet. But um, I don't know how strong Edon is. How how much damage does she do? She always will pro the this this she'll always proc Dragon Claw. So the um preview here is inaccurate. Uh, do we one shot this guy off the Eternal Breath? We don't. So let's stay out of range for now, because uh going in, we can let Roy kill with the XX. Yeah, it's like the first meaningful Efer on uh, Alina for the entire game. That's like the first time it's mattered. Is have I moved everyone? I can't switch a different to a different unit. Kill kill Ethan with the fetid law. It's not even possible. They have a bunch of rallies. Like Geese has strength rally. <laughs> All right, let's fight Edon. What's our what's our Edon fighting strategy? Well, she always does Dragon Claw, and she has all these skills. She has pretty high defenses. I don't know how much HP she has. Uh, she's probably not weak to the uh. Yeah, she's not weak to these weapons, but she's weak to Luna. Everyone's weak to Luna. If I stand next to her, with Luna, I have a a very high hit rate. If I'm near Faye, then I should have a hundred percent hit rate as well. That would be pretty good. I can have Yoda use the Saint Staff to heal, so I can attack as much as I want on player phase. Doesn't really matter about use the Eternal Breath for the Flamestone. Unfortunately, Fetid Claw does zero and then I die. Okay. Edan must have had around 120 HP, because she's uh now down to 96. A Luna crit. Could potentially uh, kill. How much does the Binding Blade do? 13s. We could maybe go for a Binding Blade kill. 
Uh, we can make a save state to see if, like, Sophia just kills with the, um, the Luna or not here. Does the 26 plus the Dragon Plot kill uh, Sophia? Um, good question. How about we rally Rez and defense onto her to make sure she can survive uh, the Dragon Claw? Why is that Luna displaying a 38 now? I thought it was lower earlier. No crit. Oh yeah, knee health for the Dragon Claw. I completely forgot. Okay, I got so caught up in people asking me about the um, ability to survive Dragon's Claw, I forgot that it's not even part of the thing. Did Venge not add any damage? Huh. Well, what are we looking at here? We need more chip. Can we apply more chip? Maybe we can apply chip with bolting. What about the, um... Well, maybe not you. Maybe someone else could borrow the XX and use it? No, they can't really get there. Maybe we can... Let's, let's try and apply chip with bolting. Uh, because I want to try and get a binding blade kill. E for bolting crit would kill ya. regular hit. Does Roy need an Aether to kill? Or a crit? He could be near Lelina for um, some support. Or one off. What if he uh, was near Clarine for charm? Wouldn't that do it? Doesn't Clarine give two points of uh, damage to... Yeah, if we just reposition your Clarine, that would be enough, right? Shauna support. As well. We have we have options that we have not needed to use in a long time due to... um. How strong our characters are. We've kind of forgot them. So, let's check now. I won't attack because I need- I want to heal first. We have more than enough damage to obliterate the Binding Blade. Let's go ahead with one more Staff of Saints. Ellie was Rally? Yeah. Let's go ahead and throw another Rally on there, just- just for kicks. Uh, we'll go ahead and Rally Skill. Oh, that's a Nomad thing, not a Lin thing. She's like a superficial Nomad. And now, let's go ahead and, uh... An end to the War of Dragons. I'm the Binding Blade guy. I'm gonna Thanos snap Eden. Ether proc. Oh, to guarantee it. Another hit. Get the crit Luna Ether. Ten million. One twenty-seven. That was enough to kill her from full. Oh my god, she's getting Thanos snap. She's going to disintegrate. No! We did. We beat the Bonnie Blade remake. Oh, yes, Walt is here to... <laughs> I forgot about Walt's presence in the story. We get to see one last Walt. A special Walt Wednesday kind of moment, even though it's Monday. It's Walt with Monday. The last map has a secret shop that sells the legendary weapons. That's fine. I like the idea of post-game stuff letting you keep your S-rank weapons like that. This is probably the vanilla cutscene. I kind of want to see the um, the kill counts on my characters. Oh my god, it's, it's Wolf. Melina, Walt. I like how Roy wanted to bring Walt to like the, the grand like war ending ascension here. It's like, oh yeah, I need me, I need my wife, and I need Walt. Notable noble and royal uh, you know, person, a prestigious person at court, Walt. An actually good fire emblem. 
Yeah, I could play a, a mainline game, or I could- wait, oh no, Fire Emblem games are bad, shit! They're a polycule? Yeah, uh, well, it's Lena Roy. It's like a, a thruple. <laughs> my wife and my boyfriend! <laughs> This is the scene where the coconut falls on Faye's head and then Eden uh, laughs about it. She has a flower crown! I don't like the spray, it's not that well drawn. The shading with the pixels is really awkward with the, with the uh, dithering effect. Eden kind of looks like TV static with the way that the pixels are done. Maybe it would look better on like a smaller scale where the colors would blend into each other more, but the checkerboarding of the pixels uh, blown up this hot, uh, magnified just makes it look like it's staticky as opposed to color blending. So I don't like the Eden Sprite. Play Sacred Echoes. I would play Sacred Echoes, actually. I would do that. That's strong consideration. I can put that on a list of maybes. Also, if I played something like Sacred Echoes, I could stream it just to stream it without feeling like I need to make a video on it. But I want to make a video on the Binding Blade remake. The Eclipse is pretty soon, but we're done with the game. So, Volt, four kills. Let's... Deke, 100 kills. We kind of forgot about Deke. It's been a long time since we used him. This guy made early game, like, possible. He's like, this game's Marcus. Hard mode's fucked early on. He can use the halberd and the hammer to kill enemies no one else can kill. And he was super reliable. Deke? Deke was great. Deke was great. I loved Deke. We just kind of... He, he fell off because these games, characters get really, really OP, and you need to scale on the stronger characters. But wow, Deke is your early game monster. Overall thoughts, I thought the game was bad. <laughs> I think too many of the changes failed to meet the quality level of Vanilla Fire Emblem. And I also thought that the game balance was poor uh, due to the over-centralizing powerful characters um, in both combat and utility spheres, like uh, Faye for combat, things like Power Staff Clarine for being your all-in-one utility unit, things like that. I thought the game balance suffered. Dorothy got 50 kills. She was a unit that was very vanilla good. Dorothy would have been very good in a different Fire Emblem due to her uh, drive strength and uh, high offensive stats, but this is a game where units need to do something game warping to be good. You couldn't be good in like a normal way. So Dorothy stopped getting deployed. Sue died, Noah died, though it was not used. We thought that Astolfo would be a unit. Um, because you can use Spirit Dust to turn him into a Light Brand Mage, and he has, like, really hot, like, the highest defensive growth. But we didn't really use Astolfo. Hey, the Eclipse is in a couple seconds. I'm actually gonna let the- Thank you so much for the, uh, five schmucks. While the, um, I'm gonna finish my thoughts later, I wanna go see the Eclipse. So, I'm gonna put, um, this BRB message up, and I'm going to go look at the Eclipse. I'm going to pause the emulation, and BRB, and I'll be back in five minutes once the eclipse is uh, over, okay? Let's, uh, hold on, pause it? Okay, it's paused. I'll be back, I'll be back. Five minutes.
I went outside and I saw the solar eclipse. Well, it's a partial eclipse here. This might be a retext. Pause this for a second to talk about the eclipse. I have some eclipse glasses, so I was able to look directly at the sun. Uh, it's basically like, you know when you see a, a crescent moon with a narrow sliver of moon? It's basically that, but with the sun. The eclipse glasses block out almost all light, so basically it just looks like a little tiny dot of uh, orange crescent moon for those like dark glasses. Otherwise, it was very slightly dim outside, but not much. It's like a very slightly diminished daylight. Like, take daylight lighting, reduced by like 15%, and that's what we got here. The shadows are also kind of distorted, so like the shadows uh, across the street and the driveway were not complete. They were a patchwork from like the trees and such, the branches, and they were a little bit distorted in shape. But otherwise, not much of a good eclipse experience here. You have to actually be in the path of totality to have like a cool eclipse experience. Anyway, I was distracted with the eclipse and I kind of did passed over Windy, but I think Windy had around 140, 150 kills. Windy was another character that's like good in a vanilla kind of way. She had all around stats and a bit of everything, but she didn't have like a completely, utterly game warping thing like Faye. But Wendy's really good. She's easy to train. She gets every stat. I think Wendy's like an S tier unit in this. She's just so versatile and so good at everything. She can just be like a generic problem solver. Are there ROM hacks that are good? I would say yes, there are many ROM hacks about it. I just don't like most vanilla rebalance style patches. But there are probably a half dozen ROM hacks I very much enjoyed. Lauren lived. No, she died. I don't know why the epilogue was like that, as if she lived, because she died to a longbow in uh, 22. She fills the role of Percival Vanilla. That's kind of funny to think about. We didn't use Guinevere. Hollywood? He's a unit. He gets, like, Roy's uh, stuff. You could give him stat boosters and have another Roy, but you could just use Roy. Roy gets exclusive access to the Binding Blade anyway. Elliewood's there to be like a backup Durandal user, mostly. But also Lynn can use Durandal and she's kind of better with it because she has Astra, which uh, probably more often than uh, Aether does. Yeah, Elliewood fucking died, I guess. Ray is a unit we thought was going to be really good because of uh, his generally like all-rounder stats plus Hex and Anathema support. And then we realize that Sophia exists, and Sophia is just like a really good version of Rey who is already good. I think Sophia is definitely like one of the best units in this because Nihil allows you to ignore so many of the bullshit bosses on top of having an all round like really just high stats in every threshold on top of being a mage. It's just universally good into every type of enemy. There's like enemy light magic isn't a thing. So even though Sophia joins super late, this high kill count is pretty impressive considering she joined in Arcadia. I think she's a good unit. <laughs> Sophia kills Zephiel for us. Sophia was a really important unit. No one's Fey though. Yeah. Yeah. Um. This is just the best unit in the hack by like a like if you made a tier list. You'd have to put Faye at the top, and you'd have to put like a couple gaps, and then you can put other units. Despite joining in Chapter 16, Faye is so truly unbelievably game warping with Flame Tongue. Not Flame Tongue, the Firestone. With infinite uses, extremely good skills, overwhelming bulk, resistance to dying with a Miracle Boon renewal. Faye is basically unkillable and can one the two range any enemy. Faye is disgusting. Thoughts on Roy? Roy's actually pretty good. Roy was strong in the early game, because we had a lot of sorties to fight. The Rapier is fine against like Chapter 4 uh, Cavaliers. Um, Spectrum Stance and Rally Spectrum were really, really good skills we used a lot early on. We kind of juggernauted with Roy in Chapter 5 on the fort with the flame, the, uh, the Wind Sword to be able to kill these like fast brigands that no one else could double. Roy has great support availability, uh, can support a lot of characters to patch them up in the early game. We did like Roy Shauna. He can give a lot of characters accuracy for boss killing. 
Late game Roy also scales really well because the Binding Blade is an absolutely fantastic weapon. 20 bite, 1 to free range, huge defenses. Unique access to the Binding Blade gives Roy a huge leg up over most of the cast. Uh, getting Gale Force is extremely solid. Aoife is a little inconsistent, but you can use Aoife or Roy to kill stuff. Roy is really good in this. Melina takes a lot of training to hit like Gale Force and crap, but I really enjoyed using her for warp and four blaze. She one shot a lot of stuff with four blaze. Who's the worst unit? Good question. There are units with skills that don't work. Like Lot's Lot doesn't function, Alert Stance doesn't do anything as stats aren't special, and Lot is way worse in this uh, than he is in vanilla, because Deke uh, kind of shows him up for the early act stuff using Halberd and Hammer on, uh, to take care of enemies that Lot could otherwise do. Wow, this text is super broken, Jesus Christ. So much for this paired end. So someone like Lot might be really bad. But Roy was really good, Shauna was fantastic. We just stopped relying on Shauna in the late game, because um, she was fantastic in a very vanilla way, and when we got Faye we didn't need Shauna as much anymore. But Shauna, S tier unit. Aptitude makes her kind of have every stat, she's a flyer. She's... She's godlike. Shauna's fantastic. Shauna is a very good unit. Do a tier list for this. I don't know the game well enough to be able to accurately tell you which characters are good or bad because there's too many um, variables in terms of uh, reclassing the class branches. Not reclassing, but to say the class branches and the skills they get and change characters' viability drastically. And um, personal skills. I don't have them all memorized, stuff like that. Did the ending change at all? Uh, not particularly. Why is Chapter 6 a Gaiden in this? I have no idea. Maybe because it replaced um, 5x in the vanilla uh, FE8 ROM, which is a Gaiden. They may just see Chapter ID and it qualified it as a Gaiden. Basically, yeah, the rest is a tier list. Yeah. Okay, well, um, can you go to the world map after? You can. Enter Question Shop. No one can enter it because it probably requires the member's card. That's funny. So there's a secret shop here that probably sells the legendary weapons, as I mentioned, but no one can enter it because we sold the member's card to afford one more bolting tome that we didn't use. What's in the regular shop? Uh, regular stuff. Warp. You can buy warp for the Tower of Volney, which is kind of funny. Uh, I meant to back out to see what was in the armory. Whoa, Dow. Hey! So, the entire game where you're thinking, Lena can use axes, is there a point to that? Do you ever get a bolt axe? Is there a single point to her having an axe rank? There is a bolt axe. You can buy it post-game. Fascinating. There's also monster killer weapons. These are all stuff you could bring into the Tower of Volney to have pretty strong weapons, I guess. Shadow Killer is only so good because only 5 might, but still pretty good, even if it's barely stronger than a Silver Sword. You can buy the Gantz Lance, the Owl's Sword, and the Tiena's Rod, which is kind of funny because this is a pretty cheap Physics Staff that's uh, infinite use. Yeah, you can unlock the Tower of Volney characters, like, uh, what do you even get from that? Do you get characters like Serena and Hayden and crap like that? Yeah, maybe there's a bolt axe somewhere besides post game, but we missed the the bolt axe, so we never had the ability to have Lilina use axes. She has a unique animation for armads, but ultimately it takes a lot of effort to train her axe rank, even if the wolf beetle gets a lot of weapon exp, because she's just better at using magic. She doesn't have the con to use axes, and her strength is much lower than her magic. So having her using axes is very cute and flavorful, but ultimately not that good. Uh, Four blaze was much better. Do I have any other comments on these units? We did grind most of them into dust. I think that the send home units mechanic is pretty ridiculous in this. The ability to give any unit capped magic is very silly and is something that Clarine shouldn't have had so early. It's the trial map characters? Okay. Can you get stuff like Zephiel? I mean, there's, yeah, there's just the tower. I'm not interested. I think I'm good to call this done. I do like how there's a world map. Having a world map for a leave is, is fun. It's a little bit of a shame that because the sake chapters are guidance, you don't have any uh, world map nodes for sake, which is just kind of like in this valley in between the mountains. But otherwise, um, 
it, I really liked having a world map. I just think the world map is done badly because every node has a shop, which makes it impossible to remember what's in what shop because you just, oh, this shop has the iron sword and the hand axe, so that's the entire shop and it's repetitive compared to other ones. Overall thoughts for the sec, um, I would probably tell people that they're probably better off playing vanilla. A lot of the changes that I wanted to praise are basically just using like ember changes as the launch pad and building on top of that. For example, making most of the reinforcements not ambush reinforcements, adding like treasure chests to certain guidance chapters to make them uh, less warp skippy and actually have content, reducing the HP of walls from like 100 to 50 to make the maps less grindy. A lot of these changes are ember changes. I would play other ROM hacks. I'm interested in playing Sacred Echoes because I think that uh, that's a really high production view port of Echoes to the GBA engine. They like redrew all the characters and put like a ton of work into it. It's very artistically and technically impressive. I've seen some of the animations they did for it. There's a ton of custom animations for that. Like Sacred Echoes in terms of production value ex eclipses this hack by like five times. Like this hack uses a bunch of like animations and such off of like the public repository and then like recolors them badly. Um, Sacred Echoes has like hand drawn new animations from like some of the most talented pixel artists I've seen. So I I would play Sacred Echoes. That would be a ROM hack I would play that I would want to show off as like a truly impressive ROM hack. I would play Blessed Heart at some point on stream because that's my ROM hack and. While I don't think it's like, you know, God's greatest creation by any means, I am I want to be proud of it because it's mine, and I would want to show it off. I would do that at some point. I would also want to play the mainline games I haven't finished. Uh, I would- does Sacred Echoes change the maps? I believe it does change uh, some of them. I don't know- I don't know the full scope of the changes in Sacred Echoes. Uh, I would also like to play the mainline FE games I've never finished. Kind of similar to how I finished Radiant Dawn on stream, I would like to go finish games I've never finished, like I would like to play FE5 at some point. I would like to play... Yeah, using the public animations isn't a bad thing, but it just shows like the, the lengths that they are willing to go to to draw like hand-drawn new ones for Sacred Echoes, and they're very, very well made. But yeah, I would like to play FE5 at some point. I would like to play... I've never finished Fates. I've tried, like, to start Fates files, like, four times. I've never finished it. I would like to finish Fates at some point, maybe, on stream. I also would like to play... What else have I not played? I kind of didn't play one for free because I played the remakes, but I feel like FE Free looks, like, like not too dated. I feel like FE Free might be worth playing. The NES games look like they're kind of hard to play because they're very dated. Uh, I'm not even saying they're bad for the time by any idea, like, any... Uh, idea there, but like, I don't know, just, I kind of don't want to play the NES games, but I, I think I would play any SNES game. I'd be willing to try FE Free. FE5 is goaded. A lot of people like FE5. I'm aware of a lot of the mechanics. People like to praise it a lot. I would be willing to try FE5. Also, actually, it's like a good, like, the highly functional translation patch of a couple of quality of life things on it, uh, Lil Manster. If you're gonna play FE1, play the Shadow Dragon Remaster hack. Yeah, I don't think I want to play FE1. No. Not, I'm not into that. But yeah, that's that's a bunch of various stream ideas I could do for future content. I am going to be making a, a video on this hack. I want to give this hack a review. I want to talk about how this hack uses a lot of resources from Project Ember, with sometimes correct crediting. I want to talk about the things in this hack that are outright uh, objectively broken. And then the things that are subjectively broken, like Faye. A lot of bugs, a lot of glitches. I want to talk about the parts of this hack that are original but do not meet the quality standard of vanilla. I want to talk about the bad battle palettes and other stuff. There's a lot of stuff I want to talk about if I want to uh, make a video on this game. So I might not stream for a bit because I might want to make another video. And then get back to streaming. Because I don't get much work done in editing if I am streaming. So maybe I'll do that. I don't think I have any more content in the stream today. I think I might just, uh, call that done. And then I'll find- I'll start writing my video and put that together. It won't take me too long because 
Even though I technically have a lot of footage, I don't have to use very much of it. There are just certain highlights from the various chapters where I want to talk about broken things, like the only thing I would need to talk to about in, say, chapter 22 would be the Zephiel reinforcement, uh, throne rooms. Throne room reinforcements being broken, how they stacked up, like, clown car style, four to a staircase. Those kind of bugs and poor balance, uh, things I'll talk about, but otherwise, these four hours I've been putting through, I only really need to, like, just dig out the highlights of random broken stuff happening, and use those as clips to make a video as a review. So yeah, I'll, I'll call it for here. Uh, I will end the stream, and I will plan my future content, of which we have countless ideas for, but thank you guys for watching me go through this, this ROM hack. I got a little burnt out in like the mid-section, but I think I finished strong. And it was really fun to get to share the experiences of like the various bugs and discover what's broken and have people kind of, you know, laughing along with me and that made it a lot of fun. I don't think I would have uh, played this just completely alone by myself for myself. But streaming it, that made it fun. Uh, thank you Dustin, I'm glad to hear that. And I'll hopefully be following up with more streams and more content in the future and I will just spend my time planning what that content is. See ya. Cheers.